And every child is born into this world at that higher state of consciousness. It's just they're indoctrinated into this, like you used to call it a posted stamp mentality with yeah. all of these rules and all these things. And then they become the perfect little piece of their organization. But like you said, it's not like we have to get there. We're already there. We're already there. Right. We we're just already forgot it. there. We've given our power away. Yeah. We've been convinced we're something else, but we're there. We are in the land of forgetfulness. We have forgotten our true nature. And 24-7, we're being encouraged to forget yeah. and re to remain in a state of self-identity amnesia. Yeah. And that's what awakening is. What is awakening? Well, I woke up. Well, no, no one's woke up. None of us have woken up. We are waking up. It's a process. And if you think you've got it, well, there's always more to know. Remember that, Socrates, etc. Um, so what is awakening? It is breaking out of only processing reality through the five senses and seeing that there is more to us than just the body and then seeing that there is more to us than just the soul if you go that far and and away you go and what what happens is that when you think limitation and you believe limitation and you self-identify with limitation limitation is a low vibrational state because your perception of of self is so limited so your frequency is limited by your perception of limitation. And so those kind of people, they'll say things like, nothing ever happens in my life. My life's ever so boring, every day is the same and all that. Yeah, because that's your perception becoming your experienced reality. But as you expand your self-identity, you know, honestly, I, I see the gurus and I, I see the, 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 the people, the spiritual teachers and all that stuff. And they so often they make it sound so complex. Oh, you have to go on a quest and you have to do this and you have to do that. And then you do this and drink the right tea. I've got no problem with people doing that if they want to do it. But it's complicating a simple process. Self-identity dictates your experience. Simple as that. You think little me, you'll have a little me life. Simple as that. And, and, and it goes in, in other ways too. Why? Because as you expand your self-identity, your sense of the I, and you move to a point where I am a point of attention within infinite reality, then I am infinite reality. As your self-identity expands your sense of self, who you are, so your frequency expands. And as your frequency expands, you're moving into higher and higher levels of awareness, which that expansion of your own awareness, that's where it's taking you. And suddenly you're tapping in to levels of knowledge, awareness, intuitive knowing, insight, which isn't available on the lower frequencies. And what do they do when you tap into them and you say, hey, this is what I've discovered. They say, you're freaking mad. You're a lunatic. You're dangerous. And all you are is tapping into levels of awareness that they're not tapping into. Not because you're special and more important than them, but you've remembered who you are, you are changing your sense of self-identity and they are not. So they're an eddy going round and round. Nothing ever happens in my life, it's ever so boring, every day is the same. When you go into levels of expanded awareness, no second is the freaking same, never mind every day. Because you are tapping into levels of insight, awareness, possibility that um, are only available in these expanded higher frequencies of energy consciousness. And anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. Ethel on the checkout, you can freaking do it. Anyone can do it. But they don't want us to know we can do it. Right. They want us to think, I'm just little me. I've got no power. I have to do what authority tells me. Why? Because they know best. Does it take effort to do it? Is it hard to do it? Do people have to push themselves to do it? 
Is it easy to go back to a little reality? Is it hard to go to an expanded reality? Well, it's. I would just say pe- to people, just take a month and everywhere you go, everything you do, do it from the perspective that you are infinite awareness, all-knowingness, having an experience. Doesn't mean you don't do the things that humans do, but you do it from the perspective of this is not me. This is an experience that me is having. Do it for a month. It will change your life. Yeah. You'll never be the same again. Yeah. If, you, if you do it and, and, and uh, consciously do it, you'll never be the same again. Because you'll realize that there are, because of the insights you get, because of the intuitive knowings that you get, by the way you feel, you will know that the you you thought you were is not who you really are. Just a month. But you, it's not about every now and again. It's everything you do. I am infinite awareness. Looking into this world having an experience. The experience is not me. This is me. And it will change your life. And as soon as you try to get pulled back into that human experience, you have to resist the temptation. Yeah. Right? And everything is going to trigger you to try to pull you back into well, that. This, this is the point, Brian. What, 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 what happens is when, when you start, you get, you get pulled back in. Mm. But the, the more you, you go, no, hold on, hold on, no, no, no. And the less you get pulled back in, and the less you get pulled back in until until you you are here most of the time. Exactly. You, everyone gets pulled back in. Yeah. You know, something happens and you get you know, but you're here most of the time, and it's a completely different world. Why? Because you are actually looking into this reality from another reality when you get to that level of expanded awareness. Right, and that's how we escape the trap. That's how we escape the trap, and. Um, if people think uh, we do it by um, stockpiling weapons and fighting the enemy, that's just what they want. It's just what they want. You know, um, y- y- it's very much on the basis of electricity. Electricity needs polarities. It needs the positive, it needs the negative. And in the cults version, this simulation version, it needs the, uh, the imposition and it needs the resistance, then they got you in the battle. That's where they want you. But if you don't resist, you just don't cooperate. You don't fight back, you just don't cooperate. Because if if enough people don't cooperate, there's nothing they can do. What do they become? They become one hand clapping. Because there's no resistance making the electrical circuit which empowers them. What you fight, you become. Right. Instead of that, just don't cooperate with it. Don't fight it. Just say, no, not doing it. Right. Not doing it. Nope, not doing it. If enough people do that, it's over. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts, 
as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.